Watch your crunch, Charmy, where you at? The motivation guy is back. And welcome back, man, to another installment of our series. What would you do? where we go over pro gameplay and have you, the viewer, decide what you would do in their situations. Today, we've got a pretty spicy one for you guys. So excited, man, with some trio action from my boy Mongrel, along with some incredible gameplay from the Peace Control legend himself, Reet. And speaking of Mongrel, all right, make sure to check out his course over on ProGuys.com and just go talk with one of our pro coaches who can really help you guys reach the next level quickly in Fortnite before season five as well. We also just launched our brand new gaming channel where we're covering all types of esports content so check that out below the first player we're going to be looking at in today's video is none other than our boy mongrel so we're going to be taking a look at some of his solo gameplay especially his fights and analyze some of the strategies he uses to outplay some really really good players all right, so in our first clip, we've got Mongrel and his trio gliding in on some players. Mongrel ends up pushing in and hitting one player for a fat pump shot, dealing 87 damage and cracking his shield. Okay, so at this point in time, Mongrel has to make his first decision. Okay, if you were Mongrel here, would you push in on this player knowing he's already low, or would you wait for your teammates to roll up? So in this situation, Mongo decides to try and get in on this player. Now in this situation, you could really just go either way. But since this player was already cracked, it's a good opportunity for Mongo to try and just get it in and just finish up the kill. I always tell you guys here on this channel that you should avoid getting too far in unless your opponent is already in a bad position. But right here, his opponent is in one of these situations. Unfortunately, Mongo misses his double edit down, so he does end up snatching the kill, but he's then able to just regroup with his trio, heal up, and continue the fight. So after winning that fight, Mongo is gliding down on more players on his own at the Pleasant Bridge. Mongo lands pretty early and is essentially a 1v3. In this situation, okay, he has to make another decision. Should Mongo build up for height on these players until the trio gets here, or should he just try to box up and just outplay them that way? Well, the answer for Mongo here definitely is just to start building up and try to control height. Being, you know, it's a 1v3, you know, it's very difficult, and boxing up here is basically a guaranteed death as the three players can just spray into his box. So Mongo plays height here, he ends up eliminating one player, and his team comes to help him clean up the remaining two. So here, and I mean like right here, you can see what tends to happen when it's a 1v3 and you box up all alone. The final player ends up boxing up to fight Mongo's trio, and they're able just to get it in and clean him up with ease. That's what Mongo is trying to avoid with his first decision in this fight. Alright, so in this next fight, which is a bit of a quicker one, we've got Mongo and XA both pushing this player's box. Alright, so Mongo gets up against the wall and has the opportunity to phase in. The player already has no shield and Mongo's teammate is right there for backup as well in case things go bad. So with that in mind, should Mongo stay outside the box and just play it safe or get into the box to end the fight? Well, right here is another example of calculated aggression. Like the play here, since the player was so low and X8 was there for backup, was to try and end the fight as quick as possible. However, X8 ends up phasing in first. So Mongo just goes for the wall and he finishes the player off that way. However, had X8 not jumped into the box there, it would be a fair play for Mongo to do it since he had max shield. He had a purple pump as well. And you know, as we said before, the player is low and X8 is there for backup. Okay, so moving into our fourth and final clip from Mongo. Okay, him and his trio are stationed up right below another team who seem to be camping in a base. Mongo's trio all have 200 HP and incredible loot, so they need to make a decision right here. Should they wait for the team above them to rotate or push up and go for the kills? So in this situation, their HP and loot are pretty incredible. And, you know, the other team is the only one remaining. So being the beast that they are, they decide to push up and ultimately clean up these kills pretty quick, clutching up the win with nearly 40 kills, which is just incredible to think about. Okay, so moving on to our analysis of the legend Reek, we're gonna be looking at some solo gameplay from him. You guys ready? All right, so to start off, our first clip, we've got Reek in a two by one box after cleaning up a kill. Now. 
a player pushes his wall, but Reed is in a really, really tough spot here. He's only at 87 HP, so he has to make some really, really smart edits if he's going to win this fight. So for Reed's first decision, this player is pushing straight up against his wall. In this situation, should Reed edit through and just box the player up, or should he edit his right wall to get a different peek on the player? So in this situation, the clear choice is really to go for the safer edit, which is the right hand peak. Obviously, there's always the opportunity to edit straight into a one pump, but the risk is high as he can just always be pre-fired in that situation or simply just get hit with a nice shot. So taking the right hand peak here gives Reed an easy angle where he can just get a decent shot off on the player. So after that, the player swings back behind his box. Since Reed has already hit the player here, the player does seem a bit nervous and this is a great opportunity to go for a big play. Since the player is sort of cornered, like Reed has to make a decision on which edit to go for. So if you were Reed, would you go for another right hand peak play or just aggressively edit out to surprise the player? option is to play it smart. Reed goes for the right hand peak here, hits a clean 180 and just really just finishes off the fight. After this whole fight, one thing is absolutely certain guys, the fact that this kid is going in Reed's next montage. <laughs> and our next clip from Reed, okay, we've got him with 13 kills and a solo versus duo arena match. One player shockwaves to his teammate, allowing Reed to go for an insane controller beam, knocking the player out of the air. However, when Reed gets down, he has a seemingly small yet very, very important decision to make. Considering his current loadout and situation, should Reed try to eliminate the player's teammate right away or go for the finish? So in this situation, Reed's best play would be to go for the finish. You know, a lot of us would actually make the decision to probably push straight in, but you never know what's gonna happen, right? Especially in team modes where you have to play it strategically, chopping down at the other team's player count is important so they're unable to revive. Plus, this could easily, easily turn into a high material fight and Reed has under 600 before getting the finish. After getting the finish, Reed cleans up the other player who tries to push him and he builds back up. However, yet another player decides to push up to Reed. If only this guy knew what was about to happen. The player does seem pretty smart, pushing on a right hand angle, and Reed has to make another decision here. Should Reed edit into this player and make a peace control play, or should he try and just build another box and just play a patient? In this fight, Reed is starting off with nearly max HP, all right? And knowing that, along with the fact that he has a purple pump, Reed edits onto this player for a surprise attack, boxes him like a fish, and then he hits him with a clean one pump to finish him off. Absolutely amazing stuff right here, man. I gotta give it to this guy. And uh, this fight really shows how quickly you can really end fights if you practice your peace control and you really use it at the same time. All right, guys, so with that being said, let's let's recap this. We got to do this, man, for our analysis of Mongrel and Reed. First off, from Mongrel, we really learned a lot about team play here. Like, in our first clip, we saw how it's more optimal to play aggressive after hitting a player for higher damage. Oftentimes, it's smart to play patient, right, and just wait for your team. But when the players are super low, sometimes you got to get it done. In the second clip, you know, we said how important it is to play hide in trios, especially if you're in a 1v3, and how deadly it can be if you box up with multiple players around. Third, we saw how you can utilize calculated aggression and team play to pressure opponents who are on their own. With two players up against one box, Mongo and X8 were able to just simply get in since they have more manpower and clean up the kill easily. And in our last clip from Mongo, we saw how you can make aggressive team plays, especially if you're in a good situation to surprise players and quickly clean up kills from Reek. We had the opportunity to see a lot of what makes him such an incredible solo player. You know, from the first two clips, we saw Reed's calculated aggression during one-on-one -on -one fights, right? Being the peace control legend that he is, Reed does a great job of, you know, playing the distance game and not dive bombing straight into his opponent, especially if he's not in the best situation himself. So in our third clip from Reed, we saw how he prioritizes getting refreshes and confirming kills over aggression in team modes, which really does benefit him in the end. And in our final clip from Reap, we saw, alongside his smart peace control plays, he isn't afraid to really get in and make a mechanical play once in a while, right? Just like Mongo, if Reed is in a good situation, then he'll go for the surprise attack. And in this situation, it resulted in a pretty easy elimination.
All right, guys, with that being said, bunch of crunch on me. That's going to wrap it up for our What Would You Do analysis of Mongrel and Reap. All right, if you guys enjoyed this analysis and you want to see more stuff like this, be sure to drop a like on it. And if you're new, be sure to sub, you know, for some of the best tips and tricks content around. But guys, we are itching closer and closer to 1 million subscribers, and we honestly cannot do this without you guys. We appreciate you. We are a family. And uh, once again, bunch of crunch, Charmy. I'll see you soon.